Hi, Grade 8 students! Welcome to another exciting and fun-filled learning here in our virtual science classroom. I am Sir Milton Hernandez and I will be your teacher for today. Are you ready? Let's go! Before we begin, please remember that our topic for today has something to do with the enabling competency of MELT-19, which is trace the development of periodic table from observations based on the similarities and properties of elements. At the conclusion of our time together, you should be able to number 1. List the earliest contributors in the discovery of elements. Number 2. Analyze what are triads and octaves and who developed this kind of elements arrangement. Number three, explain the idea on how the elements were arranged using the first periodic table. In order for us to find out the people behind the development of the first periodic table, we will use a space warp to travel to different places where these contributors were born. So brace yourself! And let's go! Our first destination, Greece. In this country, one of the greatest philosopher and scientists was born. He is none other than Aristotle. During his time, Aristotle believes that there are only four elements. Fire, air, water, now we're done here, so let's go to the next. The next person lived here in France. He is none other than Antoine Lavoisier. Lavoisier was the first person to wrote an extensive list of the first 33 elements. Now we're done here. So let's go to the next. Now we're here in Germany, where the famous chemist named Johann de Berener proposed the law of triads. What is the law of triads? It is a group composed of three elements where the middle element has properties that are an average of the other two members of the triad when ordered by the atomic mass. Example, lithium, sodium, and potassium with the atomic mass of 7, 23, and 39 respectively. So you add the first and the third element, 7 plus 39, you'll have 46. And to get the average, 46 divided by 2, you will have 23. 23 is the same atomic mass of the middle element, which is sodium. Now try to answer this on your own. Again, you add the first and the third element, then divide it by 2. Calcium 40, strontium 88, barium 137. I will give you 10 seconds to answer. So the answer is 88.5 which is almost the same as the atomic mass of the middle element, strontium. Although the idea was good, Doberaner's law of triads failed for the following reasons. Number 1. All the known elements found later could not be arranged in the form of triads. Number 2. For very low mass or very high mass elements, the law was not holding good. Therefore, Doberaner's law of triad was rejected by other scientists. Now we're done here, so let's go to the next. Next destination, England, where the chemist named John Newlands developed his own arrangement of elements known as the Law of Octaves. Law of Octaves states that when elements are arranged in the increasing order of atomic mass, every eighth element has similar properties to the first. 
This idea was similar to the musical scale. According to Newlands, every eight element must share similar properties. Say for instance, the eight element sodium will have the same property as lithium. This is the principle of the law of octaves. But this law was applicable only up to calcium. It could not include the other elements beyond calcium, especially when the noble gases was discovered. So Newland's idea was rejected as well by other scientists. Now we're done here. So let's go to the next. Next up, Russia, where the so-called the father of periodic table was born, is none other than Dmitry Mendeleev. Mendeleev arranged the elements according to increasing atomic masses in horizontal rows. Then he placed the elements which exhibited properties similar to the first element below it and then started the second row. He arranged all the known 63 elements during that time in this manner. He also left vacant spaces for the yet undiscovered elements. Mendeleev created the so-called periodic law, which states that the properties of elements are the periodic functions of their atomic masses. These are the main features of Mendeleev's periodic table. Mendeleev's periodic table contains seven horizontal rows and eight vertical columns. Mendeleev named as well these horizontal rows and vertical columns. The horizontal rows in the periodic table of Mendeleev's are called periods and the vertical columns are called groups. There are eight groups of elements numbered from one to eight. The properties of each of the elements in the same period change gradually from left to right. What went wrong? In devising his table, Mendeleev did not conform completely to the order of atomic mass. He swapped some elements around, which caused some troubles when new elements are discovered such as the noble gases. If you look at this periodic table, the elements in the green colored squares were the elements known to Mendeleev during his time. The violet on the other hand were the elements that were not yet discovered. Can you spot two elements that do not conform to the principle of the periodic law? I will give you 10 seconds to try. You may have answer argon and potassium. If you would recall, elements in Mendeleev's periodic table were arranged by increasing atomic mass. But in this case, argon with a mass of 40 is placed before potassium with a mass of 39. These are some of the defects in his periodic table. There are other elements that do not conform to the increasing atomic mass arrangement, such as cobalt and nickel, tellurium and iodine. Although errors were found, Mendeleev's periodic table still became the basis of the periodic table we have today. The main reason they gave him the title, Father of the Periodic Table. Now we're done here, so let's go to the next. We're back here in Germany, where the chemist named Lothar Mayer published his own periodic table with the same idea as Mendeleev. Mayer's periodic table. He arranged the elements based on their atomic masses and valencies. The valence of an element is the combining power of the element with the other elements. Mayer also used the atomic volume of elements and compared it with their atomic mass by putting it in a graph. This graph depicts the periodicity of each element based on their atomic volume and atomic mass. 
Mayer drafted his final version of the table in 1868. Unfortunately, he did not publish it. It got published in 1870, one year after Mendeleev published his table. Mayer predicted the existence of undiscovered elements but did not elaborate on the properties of unknown elements which Mendeleev did. This is the primary reason why most people give the first credit to Mendeleev, not Mayer, for the development of the periodic table. Now we're done here, so let's go to the next! Oh, we're here again, in England, where the English chemist named Henry Mosley developed his own periodic table based on atomic number instead of atomic mass. Mosley demonstrated that the major properties of an element are determined by the atomic number and not by the atomic mass, contradicting the idea of atomic mass arrangement of Mendeleev's periodic table. He also stated that there were three unknown elements with atomic numbers 43, 61, and 75 between aluminum and gold. There are in fact four. Mostly identified gaps in the periodic table for technetium, promethium, and rhenium. But he missed half new with an atomic number 72 because its discovery had been erroneously claimed. This gave rise to the new periodic law, which states that the physical and chemical properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic numbers. This is actually the basis of the periodic table we are using today. If you look at periodic table, you would notice that the elements are now arranged based on their atomic numbers and not by their atomic mass. Now we're back here in our classroom. Let's find out if you really understand our lesson by answering the following. Did you get all the correct answers? Well done! See you again next time here in our virtual science classroom. I am Sir Melvin Hernandez. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye!